Our art style is just like very approachable. I like punny, cartoony, stupid things and just drawing things that people on a very wide scale can relate to. So that's why I started making stickers because I, I would do these little doodles. People were like, that's cute, that's funny. And I could see it on my laptop or my water bottle. And I was like, okay. This is Michelle, an artist and illustrator. A few years ago, Michelle started selling her stickers online and they took off, especially this design. Just not how Michelle was expecting. I guess it's a really simple, easy, approachable design that people love to steal. You interested in a big time caper? A what? A heist. Art theft probably makes you think of heists like this one, but in reality, art theft doesn't take much. Artists are posting new work on sites like Instagram and Etsy every day. So today, a heist is as simple as a right click. Now every time a DM hits my inbox, I, I panic a little bit because m half of the time it's usually someone saying they've seen my design on Etsy, Amazon, Redbubble, random stores. Like, I feel like my head kind of starts spinning. It, it's kind of, because it's kind of just mind blowing to me that someone could really take something off the internet and just say, I, this is, I own it now, and I'm gonna make money off of it. I'm frequently pissed off. I'm angry about it. This is Linda Joy Catwinkle, a copyright attorney and former commercial artist herself. Everybody in this day and age needs to be online, and bad actors are just swiping images from online and reselling them. The real problem for many of these artists is they're trying to make a living through their artwork, which is their prerogative and is what copyright law is supposed to protect, and it's not in the online environment. One potential reason? E-commerce sites like Etsy operate by taking a small percentage of every sale. And over the last few years, sales on the platform have been rising. Right now they have an incentive to allow all the sales that they possibly can and therefore they have no incentive to stop infringements or counterfeits. So artists like Michelle end up taking the matter into their own hands, often direct messaging shops selling her designs. And usually most of the time they're just kind of ignorant people who really think anything on the internet's up to, for grabs. And it feels, it's annoying. I feel like I'm the one who has to educate them on why stealing is bad. <laughs> and it's frustrating, I'm not your mom, you know? Etsy declined to be interviewed, but pointed to their 2020 transparency report. They say they took down almost 55,000 illegal postings and closed 14,000 shops for repeat violations. So when I started as an artist, as an independent artist, I would say I dealt with maybe one or two infringements a year, then it started to escalate. This is Susie Garamani, the artist behind Boy Girl Party, a store with tens of thousands of sales on Etsy. At this point, I deal with thousands of infringements a year uh, across platforms like Amazon and AliExpress, Alibaba, Etsy, all different websites. At that scale, it's impossible to go one by one. So Susie uses a tool called the DMCA Takedown, a law that lets artists notify sites like Etsy about stolen work and demand the URL be removed. It's generally pretty successful to use a DMCA with a website. I think it's fairly straightforward, and I think neither party really wants to go to court. So it's a good way to just delete it from the internet and move on. But that hasn't worked out so well. Basically, it's a whack-a-mole problem. Even when a host is notified and they have uh, an image taken down, there's no requirement to make sure it stays down. So stolen work can be re-uploaded under new URL and the artist needs to file a DMCA all over again, which leaves the only option left, filing a lawsuit in federal court. But you have to have a copyright registration to get in the courtroom door. And it's $65 now per registration, so that can add up. I have a client who spent a good $47,000 just registering. Most artists can't afford to register every design they upload, let alone pay thousands of dollars in lawyer's fees to fight the case in court. So that's created an environment where it's cheap and easy to steal designs, but difficult and expensive to go after thieves.
The bigger companies that regularly rip off artists have in-house lawyers who all they do all day is deflect these complaints. They want to exhaust you and exhaust your resources to the point where you give up. Like that's, that's the game that they're playing, I think, in every situation. But <laughs> I'm not one of those artists. Susie's won cases against large retailers like Express, and not just for herself. In 2017, she organized a group of independent artists whose enamel pins were being stolen by a clothing brand called Francesca's. These companies wanted to cash in. They started creating their own copies, really crappy copies of all of our pins, and we banded together to fight as a group. And, and we called it Pinfringement. The Pinfringement group unlocked a new tool against theft, public shaming. With hundreds of thousands of followers between them online, the artists shared their story direct to the public. A settlement quickly followed. I definitely have thought about like leaving Etsy and leaving Redbubble. I, I get people stealing from me, but I also get a lot of sales from being on those platforms. But it's, it's tough, man. They make it really hard for me to leave. I have thought about whether or not I can keep living with this amount of stress. This is what I want to do with my life. I want to be an artist. I don't want to be dealing with the legal problems, but I do want to be an artist. And those things are somewhat inseparable. I mean, it's, it's not fair, it's not just, it's not ethical. It shouldn't be so easy. Sometimes I just want to just not think about it. Because <laughs> people aren't going to stop, right? Um, I'm convinced that people are going to steal this past my death. There's a few resources out there now where you can find out if the things that you've been purchasing are an infringement, an illegal one, or if they're from the actual artist. Check out pintheft.com if you're looking for resources on how to purchase something a little more consciously, or if you're an artist who's had their stuff stolen.